deep in the forest of Vancouver Island is a kite spot that is that magical combination of windy and wild. Few kite spots take so much work and planning just to score a session, but this Canadian gem is well worth the effort. Today we are checking out Nitnat Lake. My name is Crystal Vaness. Welcome to Destinations. After flying or taking a ferry to Vancouver Island, you'll need to pack up a car with all of the supplies and camping equipment you'll need and drive three hours to get to the spot. Now half of those three hours will be down bumpy old logging roads with no cell phone reception. And don't worry, the kite spot has no phone reception either. And there's bears. So while that might scare off most kiters, that is part of what makes the spot so magical. And this is a kite spot that every kiter should experience at some point. On this episode of Destinations, we are going to tell you everything you need to know about kiteboarding at Nitnat Lake and some helpful tips to help you plan your adventure. Windy season at Nitnat is in summer, so from May to September, with the most windy days being in June, July, and August. Now the wind speed here is anywhere from about 12 to 25 knots, so come prepared with a variety of kite sizes and board choices just in case. The wind at Nitnat is thermal, but you might need to check in with one of the locals on the spot just to get a read of the conditions. This is one of those places where it's windy if the temperature in one area is cooler than the temperature in another area, and that means you're guaranteed to have wind. So you will probably want to reach out in advance to one of the schools like Elevation Kiteboarding or Strong Kiteboarding, who will be able to give you that intel. They are also your resources for kite lessons, kite gear, and rentals on the spot. If you're worried about the water being cold because it's Canada, don't worry, because in this spot the most you'll need is a 3-2 full suit, and a shorty will work on warm days as well. But off the water it's another story, so here in the Canadian wild you want to be prepared for any and all temperatures, especially at night. As soon as the sun goes down you'll need a warmer layer, so sweaters, jackets, socks, and a toque or a beanie if you're not a Canadian will come in very handy here. Let's get into the launch spot. So it's pretty simple, there's one launch spot at Nitnat Lake. So park, grab a campsite, get your gear, haul it down to the beach, and you can walk up or down the lakeshore to see where you want to launch. If your upwind ability is not 100%, I would launch up at the top near elevation kiteboarding. You can launch pretty much anywhere between there and the big tree stump downwind if you're an independent rider. When you're out on the water though, try to stay upwind of the tree stump as a point of reference because the wind can get a little bit lighter downwind of that, and it's also quite difficult to get back to the beach when you're in a wind shadow. The wind on this spot is side shore, and the spot can get a bit crowded, so be sure to keep your lines wrapped up and be respectful of your fellow kiteboarders. Now you also have super tall trees along the shoreline, and the wind over there can get pretty fluky, so make sure that you're launching with your kite towards the water, not towards the trees. So this is one of those rare spots in the world where nobody is too cool to wear booties. So you have a rocky beach here, but the rocks near the waterline have barnacles on them, and they are razor sharp. So bring booties or wet socks or anything to protect your feet because if you go for a session without them, you're almost guaranteed to have sliced up feet by the end of your first session. The water conditions here are semi-flat to large top depending on how windy it is. Now if it's really windy, you will even have some nice rolling swell that you can use as kickers here. And once you're out on the water, you will be sharing your session with some of the most stoked Canadian kiters you have ever met. This steady wind here is a perfect place to work on progression and have a great session with your friends. There are kiters of all levels here, anywhere from first time lessons to pro level kiteboarders for freestyle, big air, strapless, and foil. Now it's not really a wave spot, but you'll be surprised to know that the strapless freestyle community here is very impressive. So bring any board you want, you are sure to have a great time. This is one of the best places to learn to kiteboard in Canada, and it is worth the trip if you're doing your lessons. The people that stay here are living and breathing kiteboarding and that outdoor Canadian lifestyle. So it's the perfect place to immerse yourself in the learning the kiteboard experience and to work on your progression. So get linked up with one of the schools like Elevation Kiteboarding or Strong Kiteboarding to book lessons at this spot. 
for a kite trip to this spot, preparation is everything. And we can't include all the information in this video, so you'll want to check out the written spot guide. And you can find that by clicking on the I in the corner or checking out the link, which is below. The main thing to remember when planning your trip is that the Dididat First Nations Visitor Center will be your best friend for this trip. So that's the place to put into your GPS to navigate you to close to the campground. And there's also a shop next door that has gas, food, ice sometimes, coffee, and Wi-Fi if you really need it. So this isn't the most day trip friendly spot unless you're staying in one of the nearby towns, but there's nothing really that close. So you do want to get some camping gear and come stay for a few days. That's the best way to experience this spot. But you have to bring everything you need, your kite gear, a repair kit, first aid kit, food, water, ice, beer, basically everything you're going to need to survive for a few days out in the wood. Some bear spray wouldn't hurt either. So there's some more safety tips that I can share about this spot, but you'll have to check those out in the written spot guide. This kite spot is truly one of a kind, and you will find your kite tribe here. So whether you come alone or with friends, this is a trip you will never forget. There is always an extra tree stump open by a campfire, and more often than not, there will be a talented Canadian strumming away at the guitar to cap off your evening. You will never be quite as in the moment as you are here at Ninat Lake. That's about all the info we can fit in the video, so head over to the written spot guide to find out more information about kiting and planning a trip to the spot. You can find that by clicking on the I in the corner, or find the link in the description of this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for even more kiteboarding content, including spot guides and trick tips. If you have any questions about kiteboarding at Nitnat Lake or the gear that you need to bring, you can leave us a comment below or hit us up on the website at mackiteboarding.com. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time on Destinations.